guys. My name is Georgia Francis King, and I'm an ideas editor at Quartz. Ideas editor, what's that mean? It means I get to work with geniuses on their genius ideas and turn them into op-eds featured on QZ.com. I cover the big topic of the future, which means virtual reality, gene editing, whatever Elon Musk decides to do that day. <laughs> Basically all of the dystopian and utopian features that you would normally see on an episode of Black Mirror. Over the past year, I've worked with Nobel Prize winning nuclear physicists. I've worked with Fortune 500 leaders. I've worked with Ivy League professors, uh, CEOs of some of the most innovative tech startups, lots of former people who have worked at the White House. But through getting to work with all of these certified smarty pants, I've come to realize that our notion of genius is flawed. I'd like to make the case that genius is collective, not individual. It starts with primal psychology. In the Neolithic period, there were no time for geniuses. Being part of a tribe was imperative to your survival, and that meant you had to contribute a skill. Instead of being jack of all trades, master of none, it benefited a tribe for everyone to divide and conquer. So therefore, one person would be really good at making fire, another person would be great at basket weaving, and then you'd have someone else that has to, of course, fend you off from the mountain lions. In fact, evolutionary theory suggests that we've developed these big brains that we have simply because we can collaborate with one another. It is our ability to take one idea and try to achieve it as a group of people that makes us uniquely human. Weirdly enough, I actually see this playing out in a lot of creative conversations nowadays with people who are trying to decide, do I focus on doing one thing and doing it really, really well? Or do I try to be kind of good at a lot of stuff and provide my client a package deal? I don't really think that there's like one correct answer to that. It depends on where you are at in your career and what you're trying to achieve. But what I do know is that if we all just focused on being really, really good at that one thing we really loved, that one thing that we might want to be known as a genius for, not only do we stop spreading ourselves so thin all the time, but it also means that we can let other people flourish around us. It's kind of like gardening. If you just spread all your seeds at your feet, then as those plants start to grow, all their roots get muddled up and they're trying to all clamor for that same ray of light. But if you really purposefully just plant that one seed at your feet, it then gets all of the nutrition and all of the sunlight that it needs, and it becomes healthier for it. When you apply that across an entire garden worth of creative careers, then everyone gets to flourish, and the more diversity happens as well. I know this because I used to be one of those people who tried to be good at everything. I was always that kid in class with their hand up, but not just in class, it was debating, and Shakespeare, and whitewater rafting, and choir, everything. But I realized that I was trying to stretch myself in an inch in so many different directions that I wasn't really getting anywhere. Instead, what I needed to do was laser beam my focus and travel a mile. I know that's not actually how it works mathematically. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> math was one of the things I decided not to be a genius at. <laughs> but you guys get what I mean. If I've learned one thing so far in my career, it's that specialization is key. It's because then people come to you for that one thing. It's not like anyone ever said, hey, um, Einstein, can you help us with this colorway decision? Or, oh, I bet that Georgia O'Keeffe is the person who can help us with this newfangled automobile engine. Although she was a badass, so I'm sure she probably could have anyway. <laughs> Once you've worked out that one thing that you want to be really, really good at, you then need to share it with others. Because an idea in isolation is a puzzle piece in search of a puzzle. If you take a step backward and look at the bigger picture, that's when big things happen. This kind of leads me into one of my other favorite topics, which is the collective consciousness. Between 2013 and 2016, I was the editor of Kinfolk magazine. It was at its time of rapid expansion where everything we put in its pages seemed to creep its way out into target catalogs like mason jars, flower crowns. I'm sorry about both of those things, by the way. <laughs> and people would often ask me what it was like to be at the helm of this magazine that started the slow revolution, but we never really saw it like that. 
we saw ourselves as just being part of a larger social movement. We reflected society, and society reflected it back at us. I believe that the greatest movements come from groundswells, not calls to action. Society snowballs along, picking up more and more people who subscribe to a certain value or belief or trend, and then it reaches this critical mass point and suddenly everything flips and the inverse becomes popular. Glam rock's glitter yields to grunge. The impressionists replace the expressionists. We swap our kale salads for mac and cheese bars. Civil unrest grows and a revolution begins. That's what was happening with kinfolk. We were living in this time in the 2000s of all of this excess and wanting more and doing more and earning more and working harder and putting diamantes on our glasses and grills on our teeth and then the 2007 GFC hit. And suddenly we had this greed reflected back at us and we realized we needed to live life more essentially. We wanted to stay at home and cook dinner with our families instead of putting our credit cards down at fancy restaurants. We wanted to hike mountains on the weekends rather than spend all of our time ticking off to-do lists. We wanted to learn how to throw pots and macrame hammocks and make creme brulee. That's what the collective consciousness is about. And that's what Kinfo was about. It wasn't one genius's genius idea. It was all of our ideas. And when you take all of their ideas and put it together, that's when you can achieve something really, really stellar. At the time, I believed that one person could achieve so much more than, than everyone else. But when you look at those people that you think have had that one genius idea, you realize it wasn't just that one person. It was thousands of regular people like you and me having the same idea at the same time, and that connection is power. One person happens to be the first to say that genius idea, but that doesn't mean that their voice needs to be the loudest. In conclusion, I think that genius is something that we share collectively, not individually. And while it's really important to share the uh, achievements of those around us, it's equally as important for us to realize the power that we hold as a group. Thank you. Uh, so I've actually had, one of the reasons why I know this is because I've made quite a large career change recently. Um, a lot of people get surprised when, uh, in my current job, when they find out that um, I used to be the editor of a lifestyle magazine. Um, and I say reformed lifestyle journalist because I spent the first eight years of my career as a music journalist and then moving over into kinfolk and I'm so proud of the work I did there. But I realized it was something I loved and I was good at, but it wasn't that one thing that I wanted to be really good at. That one thing I wanted to be really, really good at is I am a nerd. I am such a geek. And I wanted to spend my, my time trying to uh, illustrate some of those really uh, deeply complicated topics like machine learning and artificial intelligence and explain them for people that, like me, had to kind of work it out by myself. So now I apply my lifestyle background and my understanding of uh, people and what people want and what they like, and I try to look at all of these really, really dense topics through a cultural societal lens. So that's what I work out. So um, I love Jung. Um, I studied uh, philosophy in uh, university with those Bachelor of Arts degrees that have all come in really handy. Um, uh, one of the sparks for this idea was actually um, a book that I read earlier this year. As part of my job, I get sent like upwards of 20 books a week that I have to decide very quickly based on their title and cover design if I'm going to flick through or not. Book designers, shout out to you guys. Um, and that book was called The Knowledge Illusion. And it's by uh, Steve Sloman and Philip Fernbrack. Um, look up the knowledge illusion, um, and it is the idea that intelligence is something that we share within us um, rather than it being held in one person. And so if you want to learn a lot more, especially about like the primary psychology stuff that I was talking about, I'd recommend looking up Jung, and I'd recommend looking up the knowledge illusion. Thank you so much, Georgia.